Welcome to our Genesis GV80 review. I'm going to go really in depth and show you all of this car's features. Full disclosure, this is a press car, but Genesis has not seen this video before it was published. Okay, first up, I'm going to run through all of the cool features of this car. All trim levels get a standard adaptive suspension. This camera right here reads the road, relays information back to your suspension. The digital cluster has a 3D effect option. You've got augmented reality on your sat nav. Award winning Ergo Motion seats. These have seven air pockets, making sure you have the best posture and super comfortable for them long journeys. Really comfortable knee pads. Interesting fact, Tiger Woods almost died in this car. The Genesis GV80 saved his life. He was traveling 87 miles an hour to 84 miles an hour around that range. He hit a tree and he walked away. That just shows just how safe this car is. It's got 10 airbags and it's got the highest safety rating, the Euro NCAP five star. And safety is definitely something we think about. You might find this interesting, but Genesis don't have any dealerships. They have something called a studio located in London and their salespeople aren't on a commission structure. So therefore the experience should be a little bit more pleasurable, Genesis say, because they're not trying to hit targets or be pushy. What do you think to that? Let me know in the comments. You also get five years warranty, five years roadside assistance, and five years free servicing with the Genesis. And with the servicing element, they come to your house, they pick up your car, they give you a courtesy car, and then they bring your car back when it's all done. Now I know that is very helpful. When you jump into the Genesis GV80, immediately you have a really great ride height. I can see directly over the bonnet, those creases look great. The steering wheel is great. It's just like a big one spoke in the middle and you can see through to the cluster. Let's talk about some stats. It's 304 farther stark, 422 Newton meters of torque. It's got a nought to 62 miles per hour in 7.7 .7 seconds on the PR sheet, but actually I've seen other people get 6.9 seconds and it is quick. We'll do a launch later on to feel that power. It weighs 2.3 tons and sometimes you do feel that mass especially when you were going around some corners, it, does, it can move about a bit, a bit of body roll, but it's not a problem, it's still really comfortable. It's got a 2.5 turbo petrol engine four cylinder, and it is the only engine you can get with the Genesis GV80. They used to do a three liter diesel, which would have been pretty handy, I think. And in America, I think they have a 3.5 V6 petrol engine. I wonder what that'd be like on the efficiency. Boot space in the Genesis GV80, 735 litres OMG, more than a BMW X5 and a Merc GLE. And look at this, not only do you get a little bit of netting here with this cubby, you've got this reversible mat. I don't know if this is an option, but maybe if you've got a dog or any other animals, that side's the side to have. I think it's waterproof as well. Lift this up, your parcel shelf will fit here in this little cubby space, pretty decent. And then look, look at that very big, very practical too. So with the Genesis GV80, trim levels, there are four. We've got premium, luxury, luxury plus, and sport. Now the sport and the premium are five seaters. You've got an option of a seven seater with luxury, and luxury plus is a six seater. So they do give you some options depending on what you need. The only thing that doesn't really give you many options is the engine. There's just one, the 2.5 turbo now with the mpg i've had this car two weeks on the press spec sheet they gave me it said 31.5 mpg combined on the wltpt testing i'm getting 21.2 miles per the gallon and if i'm being honest and i'd love to hear from real world owners of the gv80 what are you getting with your 2.5 because i cannot see you getting more than 25 miles per gallon out of push it's a heavy car i've got it up here i'll tell you again at the end of this video to see what we are averaging but honestly it's not great 21.2 mpg accumulated info at the moment and that that's just one of my little gripes with the car everything else it's amazing really but i'd love to know is that good enough is that good enough for you we did see actually because there's no sign of hybrid or electrification with the GV80. It's just literally that one engine and they got rid of the three litre diesel. Although you could pick up a 2021 three litre diesel. I think we found one for around 37,000 pounds, which could be a good little bargain. We saw at the New York Motor Show, they released 
the Genesis GV80 Sport Electric Performance Coupe in magma orange, and that thing looks phenomenal. Have a little look on Google or whatever, or we'll put it on your screen right now for you. So that might be something, obviously, that's coming in the, in the future that takes it away from this just one choice engine you get at the moment. Okay, I wanna have a conversation with you about the exterior of this Genesis GV80, because it's subjective, but I love the car, it's striking. And everyone who's seen this car has said the same thing. Oliver, is it a Bentley? No, it's not a Bentley, but there is Bentley elements as we know, or some of us know that Genesis hired some couple of Bentley designers. The G Matrix grill we have up top here, it's big. It looks good, it screams luxury and elegance, doesn't it? The back, I was speaking to Adam, he doesn't like how deep the window comes here. He thinks it needs to go up a bit, but again, Brilliant for visibility. Brilliant if you're a thief as well. I can see right in the boot, I'm joking, but you can. This is very functional, works great. Don't have a dirty hand down here when you're driving a luxury car. You've got the boot button there that you can press and it pops up. But I think overall, so there's a couple of trim levels. This is the sport trim and you'll notice the sport trim. It's got black 22 inch sport alloys. On the premium, the trim level, you get 20 inches, so you probably get it a little bit comfy if you go for the premium trim, and you get darker chrome. Now, if you've been to Car Chat TV before, you've seen me talk about chrome on a car. I'm not its biggest fan, but this actually works rather well with the chrome. And the bonnet, it's absolutely fantastic. I love the bonnet, the creases down here. When you're in the car and you're looking out, it does feel like you're in some sort of spaceship, and it's just a great look. Overall, I think this is the best looking Genesis car they do in terms of design. I would love to know what you guys think down in the comments below. Is the Genesis GVA a looker or is it just not for you? I wanna to talk to you about how this car feels on the road in terms of suspension. So it's a multi-link suspension setup, front and rear. And I read and listened to a lot of other reviewers kind of slate the car being too slick, it's fidgety, it moves around a bit. Now, I'm gonna be honest, when you first get in the car and you hit potholes, I mean, we live in the UK, to be honest, and there's a lot of potholes and a lot of cracks in the roads, especially on the B roads, you're gonna feel them no matter what car you're in. And yeah, depending on what car and suspension, it's gonna minimize the feeling you get. But I still think this Genesis GV80 is comfortable. So I just wanna be a little bit honest with you, really, guys, and just say, if you're worried about how the car feels and drives, firstly, you know, get a test drive. Everybody's different, it's all subjective. But for me, the car has handled and driven, driven like a dream, and I've, I've really enjoyed it. So let me know what you think if you've driven the car, the GV80, or if it's something that you've heard about and it's put you off in the comments below. One of the coolest features that I found in this GV80, which is very handy if you've got kids or other mates that you wanna to talk to, it's called, it's on the infotainment and I'm using the rotary wheel because I don't need to touch the screen even though it is touch screen, passenger talk. So I click this. Now when I click talk now, hello Adam, I'm talking to you in the back. Can you hear me through the rear speakers? Um, well, I can't actually hear you through the speakers. Let me put my ear to it. Do it again. Okay, I'm using the passenger talk. I should hear my voice through the front microphones and play it through the rear speakers in the back so I don't have to shout to you. I can't hear anything at the minute. Okay, well, at least we tried it to see if it works, but I think it's a cool feature. Maybe it's because it needs to be at high, higher speed or something to make it more obvious, because we're going fairly slow. Yeah. But I can hear you fine, so it's, I don't know, maybe it's working, I don't know. I don't know, I don't but know about that one. It's too good, there you go, we'll check out the feature anyway. The Genesis GV80 has got a terrain mode, I've got a number of settings, I've got snow, mud and sand. I'm gonna put it onto mud now, and I'm gonna blast through this, this muddy, undulated field bit. Let's see how we get on. Oh, yeah. Wow. Whoa, yeah, there we go. Easy. Now I have Adam with me in the back of the Genesis GV80, and one of the things we always like to test is the comfort in the rear passenger seat. So Adam, talk to me. So um, I want to give you a full in-depth sort of look at the back seats because uh, starting off with the seats, I'm actually really impressed with the level of comfort you get in the back. The seats themselves are actually quite a nice sort of material to touch and 
a nice place to put your bum because they're quite soft and sort of spongy which is quite nice for your for your back passengers and let me just show you the amount of space you get so there's my knee here's the seat which is actually so far in front that you've just got so much room which is really nice as well um also let me show you over here the the temperature controls are really nice because you've got a thing that controls the temperature and sort of how fast the airflow is and where it goes as well as heated seats which is really nice two usbs and an actual plug so you've got plenty to play around with and keep you happy um looking up you've actually got something i haven't seen before in the back which is a mirror that pops down here and the light for your uh for your passengers to, to check out i don't know check themselves out or something but quite a unique feature which is nice visibility is really nice you feel nice and high up windows are really big so you can see out <gasps> and blinds i didn't even know that was there so ollie's just put them up so yeah really nice one thing i'm not sure about and i can't even tell you the color of these seats i don't know what they are whether they're green or gray um i'll show you a little bit of them I'm not sure, especially with the other colour, which is brown in here. I mean, one thing Ollie didn't mention was the actual colour of this car, which is brown. And Barbosa Burgundy. I don't think you should even be able to spec such a colour, because um, it's just so old man. But that's just my opinion. Um, anything else here? Two cup holders, which have got uh, a drink in, and everything else is really nice. Materials are nice. I've waffled on too much. Just say, um, what was it like comfort-wise? All good? Comfort-wise, suspension is nice. So, Ollie mentioned earlier about people slating the suspension. But in the back, I would say it's riding over potholes fairly well, and you're not going to be too disappointed. I want to talk to you about competition. The competitors. BMW X5. Well, that starts at £67,000. You've got a Audi Q7, starts at £64,000. A Mercedes-Benz GLE, 74K. This starts at £60,000. And it has got a huge wow factor. So I think if you're someone that isn't a little bit of a bad snob and you're not someone that's like, oh, I really want BMW, Audi and, and Merc, and you want to give another brand a bit of a chance, you will be absolutely delighted with something like Genesis. The more people that sit in one of these cars, drive it, look at it, feel it, the interior, sees how much great quality tech and features it's got, is gonna be really surprised. And I think after having this car two weeks, if uh, you were to look at buying one, whether, whether brand new or whether three to five years when the values drop a little bit, you could pick a 2021 up, I think we mentioned earlier for quite a good price. This would be a great car. So we spoke about some of the competition there. What do you guys think? Would you have this car over that? A Lexus RX is 61K. So it's still a great car and a lot of money still, but what you get is a lot as well. Let me know your thoughts. Another cool feature I wanna to talk to you about is the active sound design. Now inside the car, it's very quiet. Right, you've got active noise cancellation tech in here as well, which is another thing. But what I want to talk to you about is the sound settings for the synthetic engine sound. So this 2.5 turbo engine, if you want to hear it a little bit more, I've got it on enhanced, as you can see here. Because I, it's subjective, but I want to hear, I want to hear the engine a little bit. And you can just hear through the speakers, just augmenting the sound of what that engine is sounding like basically and you've got normal minimized and then off so if you really want i don't know a really quiet journey because it's you're feeling a bit you want to chill out you can put it into off and then you hardly get any of that engine noise come through the cabin but i actually i like the sound that it makes so i want the synthetic engine sound on enhanced on your center console, you've got a number of different drive modes. You push that button from drive 
to terrain. You've got snow, mud and sand up there. Great for traction if you're going off-roading in and whatnot. Then if I put it on the normal drive modes, I've got Eco, Comfort and Sport. Now I've been driving it in Eco because the miles per gallon isn't great. Comfort softens that things up a bit. I mean, the steering is very light anyway. And then Sport, the accelerator is very responsive and the bolsters hug me, give me a little squeeze. I can just feel them grab me and they do that on other Genesis models as well. It's a great little feature. And all the augmented reality sat navs come up. It's looking good. This, that car, we mentioned that in the features earlier. And so with the, the sport steering, it's, it's stiffened up a little bit. The only thing is, I, the only time I'm gonna drive it in sport because this car is not very efficient at all, I'm gonna be doing sport to probably the gas station when I'm gonna refill the car. And the car is quick. We haven't done the launch in it yet, but we will do in this video. I'm just having to, oh, this car's gonna let me forward, yes. And this, the performance of this car, you don't need any more. Trust me, here in the UK, you don't need any more. Now I'm just coming out, sticking to the speed limit here, and I'm gonna come out, and we've got a nice little road here, and I'm just gonna give it a little bit of a jab, just to show you about the performance. Hold on in the back. Oh, you can hear that enhanced sound. That sounds good. Eight-speed gearbox works really well. You don't even hear the gear changes normally. This is when you start feeling the weight of the car, 2.3 tons. The body roll is there, but it is pretty minimal in these corners that I'm on, on this B road, but it sounds great and the MPG will just be dropping. But I love that you've got a sport mode when you need it, bad day at work, chuck it into sport mode on the way back and it's a good, it's a good fun setting. Other than that, I'd be an eco, super light steering. And actually on the subject of steering, really great really great it it doesn't give you a ton of feedback but you don't really need it to in this type of car okay we're going to do a launch 7.7 .7 seconds 0 to 62 i'm in sport mode let's go a little bit slow on the oh that sounds good enhanced sound it's quick and that's 60 Woo -hoo -hoo! you know what that is i love that enhanced sound that kind of robotic grr really good good fun and like I said, I was in sport mode then. Car's quick enough. This car is definitely quick enough, really cool. So that has been our episode on the Genesis GV80. I think you know what I think about the look of the car, the wow factor with the interior. It's, it's brilliant. I would love to know what you guys think about the car. If I was specking the car, I think I'd go for the premium trim, which is 60,000 pounds starting from. This is the sport trim, and this is actually spec to 80K because it's a press car. But the premium, you're getting a lot of cars still. We spoke about the car that we found online, a used one with a three liter 2021, I'm looking at around 37,000 pounds there. You could lease one of these brand new for around 664 pounds per month with 8,000 pounds up front on a 5,000 miles a year uh, for four years. That's one I looked at. You'll have to let me know what you think. As always, throw us a like if you like the episode. Comment down below what you think about the car. As always, get subbed to Car Chat TV and I will see you on the next one. If you've made it this far, thank you ever so much for watching. I've just popped up two more videos on your screen that you also may like. If you do watch one, let me know what you think.